What's good YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about protocols and before I get into the video I just want to let you guys know that the map I'm using is refrag.gg. If you check the code I left in the description you get 15% off your first subscription and I'll also leave 10 free trial codes down below for you guys to use. Another little quick thing is that I'm done with this semester of college and over the summer I am going to be doing full-time content. I do streams over on my Twitch Monday through Friday 1 to 5 p.m. EST if you guys want to go ahead and check that out. I also do coaching which I'll leave below but with all of that being said let's go ahead and get into the video. So first things first, when we're talking about a protocol, we want to figure out what a protocol is. Now, a protocol is a set reaction that you have based on the other team's input. And what I mean by the other team's input is, let's say you're a cat player and you're playing with your other B player and the T's throw a market window smoke and a couple B flashes. This is a very normal way of popping B. You'll see this a lot in your games. As a cat player, I could have multiple protocols for this. My first protocol could be to molly under the window, play anti-flash and then peek when they're jumping out of the window. My second protocol could be throw this smoke and then play around the smoke on this side. My third protocol could be to run over here under the window and try and catch them while they're coming out of the window. But here are basically three reactions that I have just as the cat player when the T's are doing a B pop. And this is just me as the cat player. I'm not even the B site player. The B player could have his own set of protocols where let's say he's jump spotting, he sees someone, he drops a smoke on the balcony, throws a smoke back site, and he just plays around this back area. The smoke gives him a wall. And now he can kind of fight with his cat player and he can kind of hold B by himself. He's giving up the center of sight, but that's okay because if his teammate has this pillar to play around, he doesn't really need to hard fight this if the cat player is playing cat correctly. That was a little bit of a deep dive just on one protocol, but imagine if the other protocol for the B player is drop smoke, run away. You know, you can um, drop smoke, hide bench. You can drop smoke, jump up van. You can drop smoke and go van. There's all these different scenarios for you. And these are all things you want to think about before the T's come and pop B. Right, you want to be thinking if you're a site anchor, because mainly protocols are for the site anchor, you want to be thinking if the T's come B, if they do the most basic form of coming B, which is just market window smoke and flashes, what is my reaction? Essentially, what is my protocol? Now, notice how I've been going over the multiple protocols, the multiple options you have as a player who will be using a protocol. You want to have multiple reactions because let's say I'm playing a pug and I'm popping B on this B guy and I've done it maybe once or twice now. I'm going to tell my team, if this guy is just dropping his smoke and running to backside every round, I'll just say, yo, this B guy is dropping his smoke and running to backside every round. When we go out B, let's just fight the cat player because the B player is leaving it open. So basically, you want to have multiple protocols when you're holding a site so you don't become predictable from the other team. Now, before we get into how to use protocols, I'd like you guys to check out the sponsor for today's video. The sponsor for today's video is Skin Place, the best site for converting your skins into cold hard cash. It literally takes seconds to set up your account and get to trading. Just log into Steam, plug in your trade URL, select from the wide variety of payment methods they have, and just sell. It's that easy. Once you've converted a certain amount of skins to cash, you can get bonus rewards that scale up with how much you've sold, offering a way for you to earn more for your skins. As you can see, I sold three skins to Skin Place, and within 10 seconds of completing the trade, I saw that money pop up in my crypto wallet. Make sure to use my referral code POLOCS for a 3% bonus on your first trade, and get to converting in just minutes. Now, protocols are important because when you're anchoring a site, you want to make sure the rest of your team knows what your reaction is, right? If I'm playing A and I'm playing retake and I see them coming out ramp, I drop a smoke in front of me and I run away. I don't want my stair player fighting out when I'm playing retake on CT because if this guy is fighting the cross, I'm, I should be on site fighting with him or he should be hiding while I'm in CT, right? This doesn't make sense. You shouldn't have the anchor not fighting and the rotator fighting. You want to be together when you're fighting a site hold. So this essentially gives your team more information on what to do when the T's end up hitting a bomb site. Now I'm gonna to go to Inferno and show you an example of this, but this can apply to every single map and it is an extremely important concept for you guys to nail in if you wanna to get to that next level, if you wanna compete in teams and if you want to gain face at ELO. So let's say I'm holding A site on Inferno and I'm back default and my teammates in pit, okay? So we're gonna to need to communicate to each other what is going to happen when the T's end up coming A, right? So if the T's come up lane, which is the most normal way for the T's to come up on A, this pit player could be saying, hey, I'm holding your sight run in, right? If he's holding the sight run in, then the guy who's back default should be holding the apps walk out. This is the setup for the protocol. Now, this pit player says, when I get one, I'm dropping a smoke, right? So what that would look like is he's going to get the first kill. He's instantly going to drop a smoke in pit and he'll play around the smoke. That tells the site player that he's going to tuck after he gets the first kill. So the site player shouldn't be playing to hard fight after that first kill. This site player should be kind of playing to live just like his pit players. That'll also allow this site player to be able to catch the tees out while they're running into site. If the pit player is creating a distraction, the pit player gets the first one. You know, let's say the second tee who's running up is like, oh, he's in pit. I have to kill this guy. 
Now you can peek out and kill that guy. And this is how pro players string together sight holds. And this is something that's very, very important for players to understand when they're trying to come up in the scene is not everything in pro play is set. I can guarantee you if you see this in pro play, yes, they might have talked about it beforehand. Yes, they might have theoried it out beforehand. But for the most part, you can have a very high level sight hold if you just communicate what you're doing when stuff happens. This is kind of a base level protocol, but you can see how strong it is. Now, the last concept I want to talk about is the difference between micro protocols and macro protocols. So this is considered a micro protocol, right? This is just a small area of the map. And you're basically saying if this happens on this little area of the map, here's how we're going to fight off of each other. But this is a generally small area of the map. And yes, it's how to hold a site. But no, it's not like, you know, repositioning the entire team based off of something, essentially a protocol. So basically, if I'm an IGL, I'm going to have some protocols on my playbook that will tell my team where to go based off certain information. For instance, if there's three players towards B, let's say the B players throw like double nade on logs and smoke deep at the same time. I know there's three players at B. That means, yo, team, there's only two people at A, two people on A on Inferno is bad, and we should go towards A right now. This is a macro protocol. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go into every little protocol that you can do, but I want this video to serve as a baseline of understanding for you guys to know what to do in your next games, right? How to set up these little tiny things, and eventually, after you do them enough, you'll build on top of them. You'll know how to actually make that next level better protocol with more reactions, more little micro moving parts within it. And this is more aimed at teams, but you can even do this in your pugs, right? Again, this concept where I'm talking about pit player and site player, if I'm the pit player, very easy communication. Hey, when they run into sight, I'm dropping a smoke. Now I know that if this sight guy fights and hard fights until he dies, when I said that I'm dropping a smoke after my first kill, I'm not wrong. He can't sit here and get mad at me when I've told him exactly what I'm going to do. And no, it's not a huge deal if your teammates get mad at you. However, it is kind of funny when this happens, but basically it's a way that you can play Counter-Strike to its highest percentage, and it's very, very easy. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the video. If you liked this, don't forget to drop a like and a sub and comment if you had any questions or if you have any video suggestions that you want me to do. Like I said early in the video, I do offer coaching on my Medify, and I also stream Monday through Friday, 1 to 5 p.m. EST, if you guys want to go check me out there. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.